Why do I feel like I linger? Linger between the words to say, eh? To say the words to remember. Hey guys, it's Chris here. Uh, just going to do a quick little video about uh, Shunsui Kyoraku and uh, some of his powers and abilities in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Now, I don't intend to really talk about his role in the story, but uh, I do want to talk about, of course, his powers and abilities. And the only reason I don't want to talk about like what happens in the Thousand Year Blood War too much is... I mean, the anime is coming out soon, so basically the reason why I don't want to talk about it is, well, we're going to see it. I don't see the point in spoiling anything for people who may or may not want the information. I don't see the reason in spoiling it now when the anime is coming out soon. Now, fair point that there will be spoilers about powers and abilities, and there will be some... There will be some spoilers about the Thousand Year Blood War. If you don't want, if you want to go into the Thousand Year Blood War fresh, this is not the video for you. Leave now while you still have the chance. Um, but I won't be talking about any major plot points. Uh, for specifically Shunsui, there will be something pretty major spoiled, but that will be the extent of it. This one important thing. Then it's things like you know, <clears throat> like who he ends up fighting in the arc. Uh, I probably won't be spoiling the outcomes of those fights, but <clears throat> mainly this is just to cover things like um, his Bankai. And, you know, one cool thing I thought about him, because basically this thing happens, and this kind of... As me as a fan of Bleach, this made me watch Shinsui. I never really cared about him per se before, but during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, he actually ends up becoming one of my favorite characters, and he really gets a chance to shine that he doesn't really get throughout the rest of the series. So, I just wanted to quickly talk about, you know, powers and abilities. So, the first thing I wanted to mention was the fact that in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Yamamoto, head captain Yamamoto, fights the main leader of the um, quote-unquote antagonists of this arc, the uh, the Quincy's, um, more more specifically the Stern Raiders, and he fights the leader of the Quincy's, and he's basically like the the god of all Quincy's, and his name is Yawak, uh, and he fights Yawak, and without giving too much detail on the fight, because uh, there is a kind of plot twist that plays out right at the end of that fight. So without giving too much detail as to what that plot twist is, basically, Head Captain Genryusai Shigakuna Yamamoto dies. He loses his life while fighting Yawak. Yawak is able to get the upper hand and kill him. Shunsui Kyoraku is his replacement as Head Captain. Uh, he was actually fighting a stern rear. You'll notice that um, Manga Shunsui, um, during his time in the Thousand Year Blood War, you'll probably see him with an eye patch. This is because he fights a gun wielding uh, stern rider. We don't really find out what his shrift is. Like each of the stern riders is assigned a letter of the alphabet, and that letter coincides with their power. Like the A is the Almighty, the B is the Balance, the C is the Compulsory, stuff like that. Um, we never really find out like what exactly his shrift does, but we do know that this man, Robert, uh, uses guns. He's a dual wield gun user. Uh, seems that Shunsui happens to run into those often, seeing as he was the one that fought Stark, he was the one that fought Robert. But uh, Robert, you know, we never really see their their fight. Most of it is off screen, but Robert is good enough to actually get the upper hand on Shunsui at one point and take out his eye with his guns. So the reason why Shunsui only has one eye left is because Robert got one of his eyes with his guns. But um, so those are the two main plot spoilers is that Shunsui is now the captain commander of the 13 Court Guard squads, and he now only has one eye left because of um, his fight with Stern Ritter Robert. But um, the main focus of this episode will be his Bankai, 
Katen Kokutsui Karamatsu Shinju. And basically what happens is there's actually a, a decent reason as to why he doesn't use this Bankai throughout most of the series. And that is, you know, when he activates this Bankai, there's a basically a massive aura that covers like every direction around him. And everyone, ally or enemy, you know, they start the world starts seem, seeming darker to them. And not dark as in, like, they literally cannot see. It's just that the world seems, like, gloomier, bleak. They, um, they start feeling very negative. Like, they start feeling depressed and everything. Um, basically, the world starts feeling and looking to their perception like a sad and melancholy place. So... That's already not good, because not only are you demoralizing the enemy, you're also demoralizing your ally. And basically, the drawback for this Bankai is that, as as you'd probably guess based off of the release alone, it covers a massive area, and everybody within that area, be it ally or enemy, is affected by the power. So, basically, he his Bankai, to basically give a summary, is like... You know, of course, people usually have, like, a, a theme going with their Bankai and their Shikai. There's some kind of relation. Uh, well, for Shunsui, the relation is his Shikai allows him to make child's games, like red light, green light, uh, stuff like that, uh, so, you know, spinning tops. He's able to make children's games real. Like, you either follow the rules or there's some negative impact. It's kind of the same thing with uh, Karamatsu Shinju. Uh, the difference being, instead of a, a child's game, like a children's game, it makes an adult tragedy a reality. Uh, it's a, basically a play, and it's cut up into four dans. And the first dan is Hesitating Sharing of the Wound. Uh, and basically, any wound that Shunsui has sustained... Uh, you know, while his Bankai is active, I, I would assume, um, it even bypassing intangibility, so even if the person is, like, unable to be physically harmed, it would go right through them, um, all of his wounds appear on the body of his enemy. And any wounds shared are unable to kill the enemy, but they would still, you know, if you get your arm lobbed off, great, now you're missing an arm too. You won't die from it, but I can rest assured that not having an arm is going to be, you know, it's going to at least contribute to your towards your eventual and now very realistic death. Like, it has now become considerably easier to handle you, because even though I have one arm, it's a lot easier to fight somebody else with one arm than it is somebody with two. Uh, so then he moves on to his second Dan, the Bed of Shame, and basically after he activates this ability, uh, bloody sores start appearing on the uh, body of his opponent, and they just start massively bleeding out. There's just, like, holes that blow up all over your body. It's all bloody, and you just bleed and bleed and bleed. You just keep going. Uh, and then for the third Dan, uh, the Dangyo's uh, Abyss, this one is probably one of the more intimidating ones, because it's like, yeah, okay, I take on your injuries, but I can't even die from them. Okay, now I'm bleeding profusely, but I still have at least a little bit of time to take you out, you know? But with the third Dan, it's basically like, it's a battle of attrition. You know, who's going to die first? Uh, Shunsui basically summons, like, a massive watery, like, uh, area. Like, everywhere around him turns into water. Uh, and while you're in this water, you are both drained of your spiritual pressure... And you start to freeze because the water is so cold until one of you runs out of spiritual pressure and dies. Um, but it's not actually water. Because if I remember correctly, they can both breathe in this water. Uh, but one of like the main things that will tell you it's not water is the person he was fighting. You know, spoilers for who Shinsui will be fighting. Uh, Lile Barrio, who is not only you know able to bypass people's... Um, you know, abilities and stuff like that to hit them no matter what they do. He can go past a block to hit his target, you know. In this instance, what's important is that he can fly. 
he doesn't do what most people do in um, like uh, bleach. He doesn't use those little platforms of uh, spiritual pressure and whatnot to like pseudo fly, so to speak. He actually has wings that allow him to fly. Well, even he can't escape. He just keeps flying up and up and up and up, and he never he's never able to escape. He, you know, goes wherever he wants to, and basically, no matter how far you go, everything is reversed by the time you look around. So you start to freeze. You, you know, no matter where you go, you always end up in the same spot, and you're slowly dying. So it's basically you can't escape. Who's gonna die first? But of course, Shinsui does have his final Dan, the thread cutting shears, blood stained windpipe. Uh, pretty, pretty dead on with the description there. There's no real guessing. He basically summons a thread of spiritual pressure that he wraps around his opponent's neck, and he pulls the, the, the thread taunt, uh, so it, the thread slices open the opponent's neck, and their, their neck explodes. Like, it doesn't just cut them off. When their neck is sliced by the ribbon, their neck explodes, and they're just straight up decapitated. Boom, you're dead. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for Shunsui and his appearance in the uh, Thousand Year Blood War. Really cool character. Because of the Thousand Year Blood War, he became one of my favorites, no doubt. Um, next one is next uh, next video is definitely going to be about uh, Sajin. Sajin in the Thousand Year Blood War. I never actually really liked Sajin that much, but again, like a lot of these characters, like I, I covered Byakuya and Toshiro, and Byakuya and Toshiro have always been kind of cool characters to me. Uh, they, they're, they're most often, or more often than not, they're amongst the most liked characters, as far as I know. But, um, I don't know, man, Sejin and Shunsui, they were some characters that I didn't really care about before the Thousand Year Blood War. And then the Thousand Year Blood War came out, I was like, <laughs> this is their moment, this is, this is, they're cool now, they are like some of my favorite characters. Like, I, I thought they were okay before, but now they're awesome. So uh, that's that's pretty much it for this one. You know, leave a, leave a, a comment and tell me what you want to see in the future. Uh, leave a like if you liked the video, uh, and if you didn't, thanks for coming anyway. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see these videos more often, or if you want to continue seeing these videos. Ring the bell if you want to see them more often, or don't, because sometimes it's annoying to constantly get blown up. You know, about somebody you barely even watch, you know, making videos and stuff. In any case, you know, thank you guys for watching again. I hope you liked the video, and uh, I will see you in the next one about uh, Sajin Komomura.